know. <laughs> no, I, I don't know, but it's just, like, the gold day, key way. To, yeah, yeah. To, to this day, if you watch me work, I still do the stupid crosses on the face. Oh, oh nice. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I think I, I, I do too. Classic. Um, Can't stop doing it. But yeah, I drew something from my talking about Jewish comics. It's somewhere around here. It would take me a while to rummage, but um, I drew um, for a sermon of his uh, from my dad's synagogue talking about all the five or six senses. I don't know. Um, and I drew uh, Mr. Fantastic from uh, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way, uh, sniffing a rose. Um, I had that somewhere here. That's so. That's very beautiful. Well yes. Done. Yeah. He, he, in the middle of all of his science, he takes time to appreciate the, the flowers. Yeah. Um, if people are listening to all this, you haven't missed anything. We're just we're just riffing until a sufficient number of people get in, and then we're gonna then we're gonna start the panel. I think with this crowd, we're officially kibitzing. We're kibitzing. Kibitz exactly. out. <laughs> Give it away, y'all. Um, wow, we're almost at half. Oh, we just lost one. We were at 194, and now we're down to 193. Right, right. numbers, and they, they, they flee. I know. I, I, I know. look forward to tracking what it is that makes people hop off, and precisely when that happens. <laughs> like, uh -huh. Oh, God. The, the happiest day of my life was when I stopped checking who unfollows me on Twitter. Like, years ago, I used to have the, like, who, un, who dot unfollowed dot me. And it just ruined my life. It was yeah. the stupidest yeah. idea. You just nope. never know why people don't want to be friends with you anymore. That's yeah. <laughs> ignorance was, is bliss. No, nope. ignorance mm -hmm. is bliss. That's yeah. the Sometimes message. Your oldest best friends just don't want to hear what you have to say. <laughs> yes, exactly. About, uh, how how hot you find John Malkovich and dangerous liaisons. Well, <laughs> that was important information, and I, I feel like people it. people can't fully understand you unless they <laughs> know that. I aspect. contain multitudes and most of them. I'm not going to the truth. Yeah, it's true. Let's see. Can I turn this down a little bit? Okay. Almost up to, we'll start when we get to 250. For people who are listening, a whole ton of you signed up for this thing. Thank you all. It's, it's like, we're supposed to, well, I don't want to say what the full number is because then you might get disappointed if uh, they're not here. But uh, yeah, we, we got a lot of attendees. This is very exciting. Um, Hmm. Okay. Probably wait for another like 30 seconds at this rate. Do, 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 do. See, well, it's all alphabetical order. Anyone I recognize? Okay. Oh, brother. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'd say we're close enough and people yeah. are coming in quickly enough that we can just get going. So, uh, you know, I've done a lot of panels in my day. Usually you can see the audience. So forgive me if I seem a little off. I, I, I you know, I like to have that that full emotional dialogue with the people Same. in the, the live event. Yeah. But um, uh, welcome everybody to our Comics Jewish, uh, brought to you by Jewish Currents. Um, won't take up too much time in the intros. My, my name is Abraham Reisman. Uh, I'm a board member at Jewish Currents um, and occasional contributor. And uh, I'm the author of a new book that is coming out tomorrow, in fact, uh, called True Believer, The Rise and Fall of Stan Lee. Thank you. Um, it is being published by Penguin Random House and we'll send you a link in the chat around the end. Um, but uh, that was ostensibly the occasion for this, but we're not gonna be really talking about my book all that much. Um, we're, it is a book that deals with Jewish and Jews and comics. So I figured let's just extrapolate that. So uh, let me introduce the rest of the panelists um, real quick. Uh, this, the, these are bios you may have already seen, but uh, I didn't want to, you know, go off the off too much. So, Dr. Julia Alexeva is an author, illustrator, and professor of English and Cinema and Media Studies at the University of Pennsylvania. Alongside her recent her debut graphic novel, Soviet Daughter: A Graphic Revolution, she has published shorter graphic essays in The Nib, Lilith, Paper, uh, Paper Brigade, and Jewish Currents. Uh, Matt Lubchansky is the associate editor of The Nib, where their work most often appears, and a cartoonist and illustrator living in Queens. Their newest book, The Antifa so Super Soldier Cookbook, will be out from Silver Sprocket in March. Ellie Valley, last and not least, Ellie Valley's comics have been labeled ferociously repugnant, that's a quote, by commentary, and hilarious by the Comics Journal, which Comics Journal does not hand out compliments lightly, so that means something. His Diaspora Boy, this is the name of the book, His Diaspora Boy, Comics on Crisis in America and Israel, was hailed by the Los Angeles Review of Books as, quote, one of the most fascinating and darkly humorous books in living memory. Uh, I, I agree. I love that book. Um, so, yeah, let's, let's just dive right into it. Um, 
uh, you know, comics, Jews, superheroes, there's this big nexus where they all revolve around one another. And uh, I figured let's start just right at a top line level with one of the big philosophical questions, because that's what Jews do. You know, we ask questions. That's it's really just a, a religion about questions. And uh, the big question today is uh, who would win in a fight, Superman or God? Anyone wants to run with this? Go for it. I have a corollary before we start, please. Um, I, I would like to know which Superman you're referring to. We're oh, it's Superman Red, yeah. Superman Blue from the late 90s. Okay, because I'm thinking like if it's originals, like there's a difference between like original 1930s Superman who's like punching robber barons and stuff. And then there's like current Superman who feels uh, very Protestant to me. So yeah, like, absolutely. Dynamic, like old school Superman would have a healthy hatred for God, like any good Jew. Mm. But you know, you hate and fear God, he's your bad dad, et cetera. Uh, and like, you know, old school Superman would be aware that we have a contract with the man. So we'd have a bone to pick. But new Superman, he's like sort of like a Jesus he kind of figure where like, He's ostensibly Jewish, much like our friend Jesus. Um, <laughs> but, you know, his followers have a little different flavor. That's where I'm at with it. That's, a, that's a good. It's a good answer. Mm. Anybody else want to want to tackle this one? Hmm. Julia, you told me you were, um, you were practicing yeah, for this. I was. I was really worried about this question because I know nothing about God or Superman or fighting. <laughs> and then I thought, wait, uh, but I do know about Nietzsche. So if... <laughs> If Superman exists, doesn't that mean that God does not? In which case, Superman would win. But that's my mm. that's my sort of take on it, Ooh, knowing nothing like about it. any of this. <laughs> the the Ubermensch, the exactly. that kind of Superman. Great, I love this. Um, okay, so now that we've cleared, wait, I need to answer. My, I, yeah. I gotta do my Superman. Oh, sorry, um, sorry, I thought no, you were okay. gonna jump in. Oh no, 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 no go no. ahead. I um I'll just quickly say I think you know if God is omnipotent then god would be superman but also if god is omnipotent and has any morality whatsoever uh, god would not have allowed krypton to be destroyed and so we have to ask whether god is a supervillain. i think matt kind of uh, got into that as well amen sort of your mm -hmm. old your old testament god is definitely a supervillain. i feel yeah like. i agree mm -hmm. Uh, we're just starting out right with the sacrilege and I love it. I love it so much. Um, it's Jewish currents, y'all. So uh, let's start with, uh, well, I guess we already started. Uh, let's get into the actual questions with, uh, uh, this is about Jewish comics and Jews and comics, uh, but I want to start with the former of those two. Can each of you go around and talk about briefly a comic that you're a fan of that you may have read in childhood or more recently, whatever, and it can be a comic book, graphic novel, comic strip, whatever you like, um, that you think is sort of indisputably inherently Jewish in some way. And then tell us what makes you think it is such. Whoever wants to go first. Or I can call on somebody if you're all going to be nervous. All right, let's start with uh, Julia. I liked your answer for the last one. So go for it. <laughs> um, well, I thought of, hmm, uh, I guess I don't really like to do a lot of gatekeeping. So I like to think of a, a huge broad numbers of different comics texts as being inherently Jewish, um, as well as inherently many, many other things. So I was thinking um, uh so, social justice, revolution, and that immediately made me think of this book that I love that Verso published called Red Rosa. Oh my God, this is not happening. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you can see it kind of, there you go, um, uh, about Rosa Luxemburg. Um, so this is an instance in which it's, the topic is obviously um, incredibly Jewish. There's also um, a recent book uh, that I really love called The Hard Tomorrow by Eleanor Davis that oh, yeah. um, was honestly one of my, the best things I've read in the last couple of years. So even though that was a pretty recent read um, in terms of themes of social justice, even if the kind of explicit Jewishness might not be as visible as in Red Rosa, I think it's, I think, just think it's phenomenal. It's awesome. Matt, you wanna go? Oh, sure. Um, so I was thinking about this too. And um, <clears throat> honestly, I was like racking my brain for a while trying to not say mouse because I did read that as, at a young age and it was influential and like, uh, you know, Spiegelman aside, whatever. But like, um, and then I was thinking about like, oh, like Harvey P. Carr was also really important to me in terms of like reading indie comics when I was young. I was like, wait, our crumb, I don't know so much anymore. It doesn't mean as much to me so much. But the thing that really, really is persistent with me was uh, early Mad Magazine sure feels so like to me my jewishness is so uh new yorky 
I guess, you know, like <laughs> my family's always been around. I mean, always, but there was Cossacks and we were here. And that was like, to me, Judaism is such like a New York thing. And I know that's not exactly correct, but like to me and the way that I feel about my Judaism is that it feels very like centrally located here in the Big Apple. <laughs> like, you know, Mad Magazine feels so of like, sort of like what is like the Jewish sense of humor, you know, um, it's this sort of like, it knows it's cheesy, but that makes it not cheesy and cool. It's very wild. Uh, and I, I love those old, old Mad Magazines really intensely. Were, were there specific, what, what specific things within the Mad Corpus really spoke to you in kind of a, a jewish way? I mean, it's the, it's the mood, man. It's like, it's just sort of, it's goofy, but also not corny. And like, it doesn't feel like cheesy American, like entertainment or whatever. It feels Borscht Belty, which is this sort of like entirely separate sort of mode of humor and communication to me. Like even just Alfred E. Newman, like there's a difference between just like a moron or like a, you know, like a clown and like a schlemiel, right? Sure. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Ellie, where are you at on this? Okay, um, I'm gonna do it with Matt, of course, as well, but I, I just wanna, um, I'm gonna do two comics, but I'm gonna be quick. You can take me, shut Ooh, up whenever you want. Visual aids, all right. Yeah, <laughs> well, I don't know how, first one is Mickey Rodent, a Mad comic. Um, yeah. It was towards the end of Mad's uh, run, actually. Um, the reason I love this is because it's these Jewish guys in New York um, taking on, you know, one of the emblems of Christendom and, uh, you know, American uh, commodified culture uh, in the post-war period, uh, Mickey Rodin, and they are just absolutely um, eviscerating um, everything about um, the sort of assembly line comics and also the whole idea of animals that can talk. Um, and they have like these pet humans everywhere. You know, this is Will Elder drew this and Harvey Kurtzman, I believe Harvey Kurtzman wrote it or with, with Elder. Um, and he threw in stuff everywhere. And, you know, even like Walt Disney's signature, they put everywhere and it would become meta where they would notice the signature. And uh, they talk about, you know, how um, he's so, you know, full of himself. And um, and then it ends like on a horror note where uh, I don't want to give any spoilers, but, uh, you know, uh, Mickey, um, Mickey and Donald are fighting the whole time. And then uh, Mickey um, uh, traps him in a cage and he's about to get stuffed. And it's really, you know, it's actually um, disturbing. Um, but I, I just want to say very quickly, um, because of the Communist Code Authority, because of suppression in America, congressional hearings, et cetera, there was, um, you know, Mad had to become a magazine and also EC Comics, which published all these horrifying titles and, you know, electrocutions and, you know, stabbings, et cetera. They, they, they started making these new, uh, new direction comics, including psychoanalysis, uh, yeah. which is very Jewish, obviously, but it's also Jewish, the whole idea of, this, you know, these, you know, not to be cliche, you know, Freudians and all that, but, um, uh, you know, these comics that were just a free for all. Uh, and then suddenly Congress is like, you got to stop that. And so instead of, you know, um, just drawing like, um, you know, animal comics or whatnot, they're drawing psychoanalysis, they're like supplementing everything into psychoanalysis. Anyway, um, this one, this one story in a Mark Stone, it's about this uh, Jewish, well, you don't know he's Jewish until later but a um, TV writer who's really successful and experiencing panic attacks, a la Soprano, um, later on, de several decades later, it turns out, you know, towards the end, they, it's like all this talk therapy. It's just, it's, it's very, you know, um, uh, unintentionally um, humorous um, because of, you know, the, the glib kind of, you know, solutions that, um, that talk therapy will, will give you. But uh, it turns out towards the end, one of the big breakthroughs is he remembers um, these, these kids, uh, uh, on his block, calling him a dirty Jew. Can you see that? I don't know if it's auto-focusing well, but um, I'm describing him. it well enough. And okay, and uh, and his father, who was really abusive to him, um, was actually um, suffering from anti-Semitism as well, and and trying to compensate for um, um, inability to assimilate fully by um, by just pursuing money, basically. And that's why this TV writer is so stressed out. I just want to say one last thing about this because it, it's just really interesting to me. Um, Bill Gaines. Um, he, he, he wrote this story. He, he was the um, publisher of EC Comics. He wrote it in this interview that came out much later. Um, he actually said that because of the code, um, the, um, we were not allowed to say he was Jewish. And I'm pretty sure he's talking about this, this story. So he says in this interview that they had to hide all of his you know, particular uh, ethnicity because of the Comics Code Authority. But in this issue I have, they're calling him a dirty Jew. And so I would like to get to the bottom of this sometime. I don't know if I have some kind of rare, you know, um, copy that has Jewish written or not, but, um, but the whole thing has, has a very Jewish feel, especially when you think of it from, you know, 
Mickey Rodents to Psychoanalysis. It's a great um, arc of a certain kind of assimilation. I guess. This is a great little seminar on the the, the change that happened in comics, yeah. and yeah, is, you don't need to read uh, the Ten Cent Plague for that one. Yeah. Um, maybe, uh, maybe in the uh, comics code, you're allowed to call someone a dirty Jew. Yeah, no one could be said dirty Jew. No one true. Could. You just can't verify it. <laughs> yeah, just it's unverifiable claim. Um, I should have told everybody who's listening, uh, watching rather, uh, if, if you want uh, closed captioning, I, I apologize for not mentioning this before, go, go to the U Jewish Currents YouTube channel where this will be uh, streaming and you can, you can check it out there. Um, and also I should say there will be a portion for Q&A in the last 15 minutes or so. So uh, keep your brains spinning and thinking about what uh, might be good for a question. Um, so now that we've talked about ways that Jewish uh, comics can be Jewish, I want to get right into uh, the real Jewish currency aspect of it, which is um, problematizing and criticizing and um, asking, again, asking questions. Um, I'm curious, what do you all think, um, what, what, what's frustrating to you about the thesis that often comes up um, that, you know, the comics industry, the superhero genre, the comics medium, at least in America, is, you know, this idea that it's all inherently Jewish, that there's this secret hi Jewish history of how this stuff is really rooted in that. Because in the past couple of decades, you know, I don't want to lay all of the blame at Cavalier and Clay, the Michael Chabon novel, but I think around then there was this, you know, accurate reassessment of saying, okay, well, there's, this was an industry that was built largely by Jewish businessmen and Jewish creatives. Um, and sure, you can find some parallels between the idea of like secret identities and passing, I love that, but I feel like people have maybe taken it too far in general and kind of ended up in this world where it's it's almost within some Jewish circles, it's almost a little chauvinistic and possessive. It's sort of like, well, comics are ours, you know, superheroes are ours and you don't get them unless you're looking at them through a Jewish lens. And I know that sort of frustrates me, but I'd love to hear what y'all think in, you know, specifics or generalities about the limitations of this equivalence of, of Jews in comics. Um, you know, maybe we'll start with Ellie because he's been the one who has, has been most public in sort of poking holes in this, this theory. What, yeah, well, uh, I mean, oh, sorry, I don't know. I mean, I mean, it depends what era you're talking about. You know, it's very, it's very easy to, um, you know, see like the, um, the large number of uh, Jewish creators in the, you know, 40s and 50s, um, and then like, because there were these Jewish creators sometimes overread um, Jewish elements into their works. Um, and sometimes that's done sort of unintentionally uh, comedic effect. Um, like we've seen with, you know, the insistence that Superman is Jewish, for instance, or every superhero. <laughs> oh, I've got some other examples. Here's uh, the Hulk peril in the uh, promised land. And oh, Jimmy classic. Olsen with Don Rickles, uh, another um, indisputably uh, Jewish comic. Um, but, um, yeah, I think, I think a lot of it is just, is, is just wishing, um, uh, you know, going back in history and, um, because of, you know, understandable, um, ethnic cultural pride, etc., uh, wanting to, you know, claim them all as uh, uniquely and, um, solely perhaps, uh, Jewish, which I don't really, um, you know, agree with. I think there, there are elements in there and obviously there are certain creators who are more, um, you know, fixated on such things, but most, I think most of the um, Jews who were making stuff back in the 40s and 50s um, were not compelled um, predominantly by their, um, you know, Jewish experiences and that kind of thing. Yeah. But I'm curious about others. I think a lot about, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I think a lot about uh, basketball, which uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen Uncut Gems, but there's a bit in it where Lucky Stanfield is like, what is it with you Jews in basketball? And then Adam Sandler goes on and on about how the first points in the NBA were scored by a Jew, et cetera, et cetera. If you look at basketball records, all the early records were set by Jews. Um, and what's implicit, uh, but not explicit, is that because it was segregated, right? Um, and I think a lot about with comics, too, is sort of like, here's a, a medium that was sort of accessible to people who could maybe pass as white sometimes or whatever, but it was not a respectable enough industry for like wasps or whatever to go into, but also... Um, you know, cops are, excuse me, comics are this very accessible format. So I think there's a lot of immigrants that ended up doing it. Um, 
and it's 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 weird to sort of like assign a sort of Jewish supremacy to comics. Like for me, it's the sort of I feel very connected to my Jewish heritage that I am a cartoonist, but by no means do I feel like there's anything explicitly Jewish about being comics. The other thing I think about uh, real quick is we're talking about secret identities and passing in comics is George Harriman, Crazy Cat, who was a mixed race, uh, pro, I think black man who was a uh, very white passing. And there's tons of stuff about identity and like mutable gender identity and all sorts of crazy shit in Crazy Cat that's about that. So I think there's nothing explicitly about Judaism that means you have to be there. It's not, you know, klezmer, it's a medium. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I um, uh, like basketball, my, my friend Paul, I was talking to him a uh, couple of days ago and um, obviously Hollywood too, like the early, mm early Hollywood and cinema, um, uh, like basketball, like, like comics, a space where there haven't, there haven't been strict, uh, you know, um, quotas for, uh, um, entry, um, for, for Jews. And so immediately became a, me you know, a medium that was ex more accessible to marginalized groups. Um, I, I was also thinking about how many students I have who are, who are black and love comics, you know, so there it's, it's, a, you know, a, a medium that is very beloved, especially for some, for, you know, reasons that are inherent to it, probably, if people have had a kind of rough time in their lives. So um, does that make it explicitly Jewish? No, but that is a part of Jewish experience. Um, so uh, yeah, so I, I, I definitely agree with what um, Matt has said. I was also thinking, um, sorry, if we wanted to no, put it no, there, go ahead. but um, no, that what, with the, um, Kind of claim that that all comics are Jewish. You also have the kind of opposite claim that only a specific subsect of comics are actually Jewish enough. You know, so I think mm. both actually occur simultaneously. And I think about the other one quite a bit because um, uh, whatever the quote unquote Jewish community is, I, I think about it in terms of my own work. Where because it um, because I am an immigrant because I don't I didn't grow up in New York and I didn't um, you know I grew up first in the Soviet Union and then in the U.S. That there's this um, Kind of othering that happens even within you know a, a community of Jews um, about what is considered Jewish enough, um, and there's an anecdote I have about trying to pitch my book to a variety of different publishers and the Jewish publisher trying to get me to change the titles of some of the books that I have drawn as like influences when I was a kid. Like, oh, these aren't Jewish authors. Can you change them to be Jewish? It's like, well, I didn't read a lot of Jewish authors when I was a kid. Oh well, no, <laughs> you know, but that but it wasn't considered Jewish enough. So I just very That's really interesting. I, I mean, but that that gets at this sort of purity of Jewishness that often it does not just rear its ugly head in in the comics context, but throughout any number of uh, worlds that uh, and mediums that Jews try to create Jewish art in. There's there's always this sense of like, well, if I you know include stuff in my influences that is not Jewish, am I somehow diluting it? And it's it's like the the artistic equivalent of fear about intermarriage or something like, you know, if, if I have elements that are not strictly Jewish, does that diminish me? Does that diminish my work? And um, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't see it that way. Um, and clearly it, I, well, I'm curious what, what, what Jewish authors or whatever, did they want you to change it to like who were considered like Jewish enough or did they just say, come up with something? Yeah, they just had come up with something. And I was like, I, I genuinely can't think of anything. I mean, yeah. was, uh, but um, just because I, I was more likely to have wanted to read like Jack London or Alexander Dumas. I don't know. I was just like wanted like adventure, and uh, but it wasn't. Um, but then they also thought it wasn't. Uh, and, and Ellie will probably uh, appreciate this, but they also thought it wasn't pro-Israel enough and they wanted me to include really? some kind of Israel-related name, name situation. Name the publisher. Who was this? Who said this? I will private message. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. In terms, we'll... Of like, in, in terms of that too, I would say, you know, talk to any any uh, any Jewish person who isn't white in America and how seriously their Judaism is taken. Talk to any anti-Zionist Jew in America, how seriously their Judaism is taken. It's just sort of like, it's just sort of a larger gatekeeping phenomenon there, right? Yep, yep. Wait, can I and, say something? Yeah, Back to ahead. the earlier point about just about um, Jewish comics, whatever, 40s, I don't know. Um, no, I think it's interesting because um, 
similar um, questions and discussions um, revolve around the film industry and um, you know Jews involved in film production in that same you know era and um, you know there, there's a lot of you know conversation about film noir and how it was motivated by um, real a real dark uh, obviously film noir um, uh, fervor um, because it was um, you know many of the creators were coming from they were emigres and or refugees from um, from Europe. And um, it's just interesting that, you know, um, insofar as film noir can be described as, you know, coming out of a certain kind of Jewish um, consciousness or mentality. And obviously that's also a um, overly broad uh, statement, but, you know, to, to contrast that with the superhero comics and, you know, the, 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 um, you know, the mad stuff um, it's, you know, if, if they were insofar as they were uh, both, uh, Jewish League influence. It's interesting how they took such different directions. Obviously, the EC comics that were more um, horror oriented, you know, tended a little bit more towards the noir. But even they, you know, give them as much credit as they're due. They're nothing like noir with just like this total nihilistic um, and dark um, conclusions and underbelly. So I don't know. Just throwing that out. No, it's a good point, and, and it, you know. That makes me want to move to the quick little slide portion where I wanted to show some comics that uh, our panelists have made. Let me see if I can figure out how to do the screen share and make it work. Portion of screen. And there we go. Are we seeing the, can people see the slide? I hope. Yes. yes. Okay, great. So this is Jews and Superheroes. This was a 2010 comic that uh, Ellie put together. Um, and where did you publish this one? I can't remember. So far. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> it's part of the, uh, kind of, uh, what I was going to explain about it, but no, ask your, you have a question about it or? No, I was just, okay. I, it's a, it's a, just to briefly summarize so people don't have to, you know, yeah. get too close at it. It's, it's this, well, why don't you summarize it? What was, what were you? Well, yeah. it's, you know, it's a bunch of superheroes talking about Jewish comments essentially. Um, and, um, you know, wondering what, it, what, what is the Jewish experience that, you know, can be used to, um, define this category of Jewish comics, but, you know, the, the sort of like in joke behind it was um, so far is an interdisciplinary journal of Jewish studies. It's a Jewish academic journal. Um, they asked me if I wanted to contribute something. And so I'm kind of making fun of them in the comic because the whole comic ends with uh, Superman talking to Plastic Man because, you know, the, the whole comic, you know, they start off by saying, you know, um, you know, operating a pickle push car is quintessentially Jewish and then marching for civil rights is quint quintessentially Jewish. And then, um, you know, masturbating into my family's dinner, you know, the whole Philip Roth era of that, um, you know, and, and then, you know, um, just awful uh, credit default swaps, you know, the horrors that were um, happening when I drew this in 2008, um, is that quintessentially Jewish? But then, and then, you know, hooking up on birthright, sorry, I'm just selling the whole comic here. Um, but, um, but it ends with, um, you know, what makes you so Jewish in two, oh, 2010? Um, chair of a Jewish uh, studies department whose academic discipline is Jews as metaphor for superheroes and superheroes as metaphor for Jews. And then the, the titles you can check out. Um, I don't know if you can read that. Riddler but. and the Rambam studies in counter textual, <laughs> counter -textual meta analyses. Meta -analyses. Yeah. Kabbalistic duality and the Wonder Twins, modern perspectives. Yeah, yeah it's. <laughs> um, and also, I mean, it, by the way, the, the other uh, essays in this, I was, you know, making fun, but they're actually pretty good, you know, uh, and pretty solid. <laughs> Um, but, you know, like over here also, I mean, I do think, unfortunately, um, I don't know if you can see like the titles that Superman's carrying there. Um, you know, Mendel's Shtick, Marty's Schmaltz, Yisroel's exper Experiences with Anti-Semitic Irish Thugs on Grand Street. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think, you know, um, the, the uh, joke is these are all graphic novels about life in the tenements that. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. basically the Holocaust and Lower East Side are, um, you know, obviously there are, there are exceptions, but just when people are coming at it from a very um, broad perspective, um, unfortunately, maybe because of the limitations of what we generally perceive to be comics, you know, or, or who reads comics, they, they just go for these kind of like quick, or I have this other example, this is an actual thing, kosher comics, it's actually kind of funny, but um, I don't know, um, Tishman of the Apes, I mean, it's just like such cornball shit, it's Borschfeld stuff actually. Um, and so, uh, you know, um, I, this comic in Shofar was um, poking fun at the, so, the sort of um, the urge to create a um, collective 
um, experience, um, often motivated by nostalgia, which doesn't really mirror the experience that most Jews in America currently uh, are living. Yeah. Um, and does anybody want to riff on Ellie's comic, or do we want to move on to? How many people left during that? <laughs> I was. I mean, the 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 books that Superman was holding was just. Uh... Oh, in this or yeah, yeah. It's maybe oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, and as, yeah. and as an academic, I am not at all offended, and that is a very accurate representation of the, of the field. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's you know I mentioned Shabon. It's like I love Cavalier and Clay, and I really do feel like there was a whole generation of people who read that novel and went like, oh, that's the way to understand. That's the key to understanding everything, and. It's a novel. It's not an academic paper. It's like suggesting things, and then people sort of were taking them as, as you know, down from Sinai. And you know, I, I, this is something I, I have been. If I, I guess I'm a panelist on this, in addition to being the moderator. You know, this is something that I sort of grapple with in the the Stan Lee biography. Is you know, Stan was in brief. You know, he was indisputably Jewish in his upbringing and his background. He had you know Romanian Jewish immigrant parents who escaped horrible anti-Semitism there, raised their kids to be Jewish and uh, were very passionate about it. And then Stan, as soon as he had his own wherewithal, just like completely walked away from Jewishness. And you end up with this complicated situation where you have to go, okay, well, surely one's upbringing, if it's Jewish, is going to, like any other upbringing, influence the stuff you do. So could it be that, like, there are Jewish themes in the works of Marvel Comics? And I would contend that you just have to be really, really, really careful about that. A, because we get into the whole aspect of, like, Stan may not have really been the author of these comics in a meaningful way. Um, but even if we take it that he, he was the meaningful author of these things and entering these ideas into the, the finished works, you know, a lot of them, and this is, I think, kind of part of what you're alluding to, Ellie, or there's another comic you did as well that alludes to this. A lot of the stuff that we say is like, wow, what a Jewish theme is just a universal human truth. You know, great power like, comes great responsibility. Great power comes great responsibility or like, you know, family. I mean, there, there's a book that I won't name because I don't want to throw the person totally under the bus, but where the, the person, this, this Jewish writer who's wrote, wrote this whole book about, book about Jews and superheroes is like, you know, the Fantastic Four, they're a family. And Shalom Bayit is a concept that families have to uh, engage with to find peace among themselves. And that makes this a very Jewish family story. And it's like, I don't know, man. Was that an academic book or? No, no, it was a pop book. This was not an academic book, but it, but it got some reasonable pickup and it's just, I don't know. I, I just think you can really easily overdo it. And Abe, wouldn't Ellie, you say that Superman flying backwards around the earth so the time goes backwards, how is that any different than Tacone alum? Uh, oh, <laughs> you right. are what trying to restore the earth, Abe? Uh, you, know, you know, you make a solid point. I'm trying to figure out how Superman kissing Lois to erase her memories fits <laughs> into the Jewish corpus. Uh, I'm sure there's something that one of the, one of the Wonder Rebbies was able to do along those lines. Um, yeah, but, Superman meets eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. I see yes, it, exactly. the dissertation. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's move, enough about me. Let's move back on to some of the other comics that folks did that I want to highlight. So maybe, uh, let's do Julia next. Uh, let me just pull up the thing. Uh, oh, let's do screen share, screen share, portion of screen. Oh God, where is oh, it? Oh, okay. oh. There we oh, go. Boy. Uh, let's go down to Julia's. Can everybody see it? I think you should zoom out a little bit. I think zoom we're getting like a we're getting like a tiny portion. Oh of it, really? That's okay. That's okay. Is it okay? I just yes. I have literally no clue how to zoom out on a. Let's if I did this. Oh, there oh, we go. Oh yes, go. yes. It's much better. Okay. Yes. There we go. Great. Um. So, you know, your uh, Soviet daughter deals less directly with like comics in within the text of the thing. Um, you know, it's not, a, you know, a screed about Jewish comics, but I guess I'm curious, you know, well, first of all, what, what, were there Jewish comics that played into your thoughts about how to construct Soviet Daughter? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I sort of drew 
influence from everywhere I could find it. It was just kind of like trying to figure out what the style of this would be because I didn't want to just um, use whatever style I was using generally and really wanted to think about how I wanted it to look. Um, and uh, it's not necessarily explicitly Jewish, but um, it is anti-fascist and that what is more Jewish than wanting to kill some Nazis. Uh, and um, we're, uh, in, in 2010, before I, before I started grad school, I worked for um, an exhibit at the Art, Art Institute of Chicago called um, Windows on the War. It's for, it, it was based on these um, World War II um, Soviet, they were called task posters. Um, and they were posters that were, um, that combined image and text that were, they were comics um, and they were based on Mayakovsky's comics from the twenties that were called the Rasta windows because they were like window panes. Um, and so during World War II, uh, a bunch of, of artists, uh, some of whom were Jewish and writers, some of whom were Jewish, were mobilized to create these huge numbers of posters that like lambasted Hitler and were, were like beautiful propaganda devices. Um, and they had a lot of different styles and um, a lot of, they were all hand painted because they didn't have access to like the machinery that would crank them out. And so they would literally like stencil all together. And they were, they had this like really painterly style. And so I just like loved the idea of these anti, like anti-fascist, anti-Nazi um, posters that you would, they would just like take to all of the corners of the Eastern French, just like throwing them out of planes, you know, uh, onto the, onto like parts of Poland and Czechoslovakia and whatnot. And um, so I was really influenced by those posters and I would highly, there were hundreds of them, they were gorgeous. So I'd highly recommend people check them out. Some of them were like sat satirical, almost like proto-mad. I'm sure there's absolutely no connection like mm -hmm. historically, but they they had that kind of like Hitler as this creepy crawly bug, like almost a crumb-esque grotesquery situation. But then um, some of them were like very romantic um, uh, as if they were like painted in the 19th century, but they're, they were so cool. And I, where, where can um, people find those? I, I, I confess I'm um, illiterate in them. I can, I can try to find a link uh, and put it in the chat, but they're just called task posters. So if you look them up on Google, you can just find them. It's called, it's T-A-S-S. -S. Um, and, and the, uh, the exhibit was at the Art Institute of Chicago. So if you like Google Art Institute of Chicago task posters, they should come up. Um, they pulled them from all over the world and they were just, incredible. And so I thought a lot about like the visual culture of this period. Um, this particular uh, uh, panel that, that, that you chose was from like the early parts of the book, but then the vast majority of it was post-revolution. Um, and I tried to integrate the visual culture around all of the periods I was talking about into, um, into the style. And so like, what were people watch looking at that? What, what were the films like? Some of them were made by Jews. Like I was obsessed with Ziga Verta films and there are a bunch of like Easter eggs of Ziga Vertov in there. Um, so not, you know, Jewish in content um, uh, or explicitly Jewish, but certainly made by a lot of, uh, by um, people that were Jewish in the, in the Soviet Union. Um, Which is true in the American comic system as well. I mean, we've been talking about some of the, you know, we started out by talking about comics that are pretty, you know, if not totally openly, then, uh, you know, very implicitly Jewish. And yet, you know, when you're talking about whether it's superheroes or psychoanalysis comics or romance comics, whatever, you have these Jewish creators who were making stuff that is in some way inherently Jewish, um, but uh, it's hard to pin down what that is because it was not textually Jewish. And uh, I do like, one of the reasons I picked this, this little panel is I like um, uh, the, the little poster for Ritual Sacrifice was that intended to be like, was that a drawing of a, a dead child or was that, was that like, would that have been a photo? Um, that, well, it, well, I, obviously I drew that, the, but it was based on a photo. Of, right, I was saying, what, um, what is it based, like, what would it have looked uh, like? It's, IRL? it's, uh, it would have looked, it didn't, it doesn't look that different um, from that. The oh. ritual sacrifice I, I, I added, I embellished a little bit on that one, but um, they, during the Bayless trial, which is what this, um, like pages about there, it, it was, um, you know, a, the idea of blood libel uh, was on the floor, everyone was talking about it. And that there were these posters um, that you could actually find. You can, if you look up the Bayless affair, um, this, the photo of this dead, um, like uh, Eastern European nine, I think nine-year-old boy come, comes up who was assumed to be murdered by, by um, Bayless, who was then eventually acquitted. And so um, if you, you, it was actually from a photograph and the photograph looks like that. It's really quite creepy. Um, 
Yeah, like I'd imagine, you know, being someone that has just like a, has a mild amount of anti-Semitism and seeing that and being like, oh yes, oh, how could how could they do such a thing, the Jews, yeah. that poor that poor Ukrainian boy. <laughs> and and that gets at something that I think will be relevant for looking at Matt's comic. Let's see if I can not show my whole desktop again because that was very embarrassing. Yes. I hope nobody uh, screenshot. Yeah, let's see here. Where's preview? Um, someday I'm going to actually figure out how to do this thing. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, let's see. Where, is that the next one? There we go. We're on the last one. Uh, we need to zoom in on this a little bit here. Yeah. Is that a good size? Uh, maybe so, a little bigger. A little bigger? Sure. Yeah. Um, that's good. So, Matt did this comic in, I believe it was 2017, I think. Is that right? Yeah, it was like, it was like March 2017. It was like two months into the Trump administration right right um uh and it's about sort of references to hitler and the holocaust and um sort of the 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 difficulties of portraying that stuff um and you know what well, maybe you want to get into sort of the the not to you know kill the frog by overanalyzing it but what was the set of questions you were you were trying to answer or at least grapple with when you were attacking this comic? Sure. So, so this is actually from, uh, there's a thing that we do on the nib sometimes called the response. We'll get four or five, six cartoonists to answer a single question. Uh, and this one was five Jewish cartoonists talking about Holocaust imagery as a, as a tool for satire art generally. Uh, it was me, uh, Leela Corman, Lisa Eisenberg, Sarah Glidden, and uh, Ellie here. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm talking here about like Godwin's law. Are you allowed to invoke Hitler? Um, looking at this, I'm shocked by how much better I got at drawing swastikas during the Trump administration, which is a cool thing to think about. Yeah. And you can thank the nice folks there for that. Um, I mean, in my stance is that like, you know, the context is important that we should, you know, we do have a responsibility to call fascists a fascist. I think Ellie would agree with me. Um, when the, the GOP has, ex, you know, explicitly exterminations policies towards immigrants and trans people, black activists, a ton of more groups. Like, I think my last panel here, it, it, I, I think my stance really hasn't changed in terms of like, um, if someone's going to act like a fascist, you should call them a fascist. I mean, I think it's important to recognize, I think, but the Trump administration, when you're talking about them, is that they weren't necessarily very good at it. Yeah, it doesn't. That certainly doesn't change um, how they felt, and I think the last couple months of that administration really bore that out. The, you know, the GOP is basically a, a Nazi party at this point. But I think, I think at this point in time, um, a lot of us were sort of grappling with like, what is satire? What can it do? Um, and you know, like I was never of the mind that uh, satire actually changes a person's mind. Um, but I think definitely the last, I don't know, 10 years of 20 years of American history have really uh, proven that true. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, talking about the imagery, one of the reasons why I wanted to um, dovetail this with what Julia was saying is, you know, in both this comic and the portion that we were showing from Soviet Daughter, you're drawing stuff that, I mean, I'm not a cartoonist, so I don't know whether this is the case, but that I would imagine, you know, just makes you uncomfortable literally to just be drawing and to like, you know, have to go back and revise and sort of touch up and you're like touching up a freaking swastika, you know? Oh yeah, I mean, and like it, looking up Google image searches for uh, Nazi uniforms was the thing I had to do a ton of times. And how does that feel when you're doing bad? <laughs> yeah. Like I was saying like the fact that I can look at these swastikas and be like, oh, I got much better at that. Like, you know, these swastikas aren't very good. Um, and it's, you know, it's unfortunate, especially when you're talking about specifically the, the German Nazi party where it is so, they were so big on aesthetics. So it's like weirdly yeah. you have to get, if you're going to talk about them in a comic, you really got to get it right. Because they were really devoted, I mean, unfortunately, very devoted to looking rather slick. Um, and I, yeah, it just, it doesn't feel good to have to like, I mean, I, I hate, there's a reason in my comics that I really don't draw specific politicians all too often and it's because i don't like a i don't want to talk only in specifics about what a single politician did that's not really as interesting to me when i'm writing um i like to read that in other people's work but like 
and B, I just don't like looking at, I don't like having to look up what Ted Cruz looks like, you know, like it's just not fun for me to be like, when I sit down to draw, I want to draw something that I want to draw. I want to feel good when I'm doing it. Uh, that's why I started doing it. So like having to look up Mitch McConnell's turtle face is not like <laughs> super pleasant for me in the same way. I mean, it's definitely a, more unpleasant to look up like what a SS hat looks like. Yeah. Um, yeah. I really resonate with that. Cause I, uh, when I, when I was doing Sylvia Dar, I don't know if this is the same part, but you can see like Stalin's a uh, gross head right. here. Um, yeah, I did. That, that is not a pro Stalinist work. It was an anti-Stalinist <laughs> chapter, obviously. And uh, yeah, when I was doing the chapters and about the war, it, it like, I was just like totally immersed in it. And I, I wouldn't know, I don't know if I'd be able to do that again. It was just surrounding myself with that media checking, just like, just like you did, Matt, like, what did the uniforms look like? I mean, the Soviet uniforms did look good. So that was okay. But, the, <laughs> but the, you know, like the atrocities of the time I had to look up so many photographs of Baba Yar and I was just like, it really yeah. does, a like does a number on you, you know, like looking at that kind of stuff. And I, I will not probably do something like that again. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, um, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, 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 go ahead. Uh, mass graves, uh, don't enjoy Googling it uh, as image research mm -hmm. and um, it's it's uh, disturbing. Also, you know, zombies, but I mean zombies, you know, you assume that they're not real. Um, but speaking of Stalin, I remember this in MAD from the, I, probably 1955, oh, uh, wow. Stalin was born in Whoa. the Bronx. Ripley's <laughs> leaving. <laughs> It's a good, uh, it's a good just, Stalin. Yeah, I love yeah, the yeah. double it's an unconventional chin. one. Yeah, it riffs on like, different parts uh, of his body. Yeah, it looks like uh, the guy who drew the very old Dick Tracy strips. Yes. Like, oh yeah. Old, old um, steel Julia, man. Do you remember actually the night that we met was uh, yeah the eve of inauguration? It was. It was. I, I decided. Yeah, I thought I was. I was actually doing a similar event to you to you, Abe, but I tried to gather uh, people that were working on art and comics, and that was how. Uh, that but I remember that, yeah. one of the other panelists was uh, someone who did political art. I, 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 I'm sorry, I don't remember his name, but he was talking about how he's never going to draw Donald Trump. This was in like, oh, it's Josh McPhee. Yes, it was Josh. Yeah, that, that was and awesome. Like, I'm thinking that's fucking stupid. And then, like, a year later, I was like, I want to draw this guy ever again. It's stupid. <laughs> I'm sick of looking at his fucking face. Like, yeah, right. some wise words he, from Josh there. That really read, yeah, I, I never, I didn't say it to him, but I want to formally apologize for disagreeing privately. Um, I'm wondering, can we run over a little bit? Uh, I, 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 I'd love to, just because we, we, I had one other question that I wanted to pose to us, and then there's, I just opened the Q and A panel, and we've got a lot of people asking us interesting questions. So we all look at those, or is that? Um... I'll, I'll just, I'll just do it really quick. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's, it, I it takes too long for us to all. Um, I think it might just be open to me because I'm a moderator but, or co-host, whatever. But what, one thing before we do that, Ellie, I, I've always sort of wondered, how does it feel to be accused of, you know, using anti-Semitic industry imagery in such relentlessly Jewish <laughs> comics? I mean, have you, have, have you, as you're thinking, evolved on like how to respond to that and incorporate that? Oh, incorporate it in my work? No, no, just like in your head and go like, okay. Well, no, I, I oh, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 I was, I, was, I, I didn't know. really I, have the rest of that question. I, listen, the, the whole the whole claim that I um, produce anti-Semitic imagery originated on the Zionist right among uh, right-wing Jews who are trying to, you know, I hate to use the word that's only allowed to be used by the right wing, but cancel me. I'm not, I don't like to, you know, even go there. But then it was borrowed more recently in the past year, especially during the, during the primaries by centrists. Um, who mm -hmm. are trying to erase uh, the shit that I was saying. And so they're saying, oh, he draws everyone he doesn't like as, as a Nazi. And um, uh, he, he draws, he, he's an anti-Semite. He, you know, he, he, he draws like Der Sturmer because these imbeciles, their only frame of reference for anything black and white is Nazi art because they're fucking idiots. And, um, but they're very vocal idiots. And, and so, um, but I, I do think we have, um, the Zionist right and Zionist um, in general, the Jewish right, um, to blame for the um, for the origins of that. And um, you know, there's been um, there's been no um, you know accountability for that. You know, so it sucks. But you know, I'm I continue to draw and fuck them. Yeah. Sorry, I get a little angry when, when we talk. Oh, no, I this. would imagine. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I I was I was curious, but yeah, I, I, I want to go to a question here that may end up being sort of stumpers for a stumper for us, uh, which is a sign of a larger social problem. But um, I want to see if maybe somebody else here is smarter than I am. 
Uh, re Jewish, this comes from Brittany Marie, uh, regarding Jewish enough gatekeeping. Are there Jewish voices in comics outside of the mainstream conception of white Ashkenazi American Judaism that inspire you? I will fully confess that because of aforementioned gatekeeping, those voices very often do not get broadcast. And I will fully confess that I have not done a good enough job of trying to seek them out. I, I'm sort of barraged by stuff that's getting thrown at me and, and it's not really getting thrown, um, or at least I'm not in the right path of it hitting me. Are, do any of you have, you know, either whether it's Sephardi, Mizrahi, uh, you know, Black Jews, Jews of color in general, are, are there comics uh, and creators in that realm that have inspired you? And I just, I, I'm not trying to guilt us here. I mean, it's, it's a larger guilt for the industry, um, but, you know, are, are there voices out there that you have enjoyed? And if not, what do you think can maybe be done about that? Silence. To be honest, I don't really know who is and isn't Jewish. So I'm like, I have my comics up in front of me, but I honestly don't know. You know, there are comics mm -hmm. I love who, uh, by people who are, um, uh, you know, a variety of different you know, ethnicities, and, and uh, but sure. I don't, I have no idea whether they're Jewish or not. I so I I, I plead the ignorance on, on on that count. I just. Yeah. No, um, I know. And again, I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad or, or if I'll, I'll be the scapegoat. I'll, I'll be the Jesus here and accept <laughs> everybody's bad feelings and you guys can be liberated. But um, no, but it, it's a real problem. I mean, it, it gets at the larger problem in the Jewish community of what we were talking about before. We're just like, if you're not in this very thin tranche of demographic and ideological conceptions of Judaism and Jewishness, you just don't get into the the journals you don't get into the festivals you don't I would get say highlighted say again i would say furthermore there's probably you know jews of color that are doing comics out there that you would comics that you would know and recognize but they're not like recognized as jewish creators they're not invited to the panels they're not yes they're yeah. isn't taken seriously yes yes i mean i mean like i'm this is a blind spot that i have too it's just no i know and and I, we have to say that also that the sphere is so small of what? I take it back. Are you okay? Oh. Yes, Sammy Harkum. Sammy Harkum is a terrific cartoonist and is very much from an Iraqi Jewish background. Oh. And Blood of the Virgin, I can't, I knew there was somebody in my brain that I was having trouble coming up with. Sammy Harkum, who is a, a tremendously talented cartoonist who has been doing this, uh, has this series called Crickets and uh, has been serializing this amazing story about this Iraqi Jew or, you know, it, it, like second generation living in Los Angeles in the film industry in the 1970s. And it's not like all about being Jewish, um, but there are moments, like there's this moment where he goes to this party with a bunch of like, um, you know, older uh, Iraqi Jews, Jewish emigres in, in Los Angeles. And they're just like complaining about like, you know, those fucking communists who run Israel, they ruined everything for us. Like we had it good in Baghdad. And it's such an interesting scene. And I'll, you know, if, if Sammy's watching this, I emailed you a while ago about us doing a story about your comics, please call me back. I would love to do that. But just a, a slight shout out to something that is not exactly Ashka normative. Um, and uh, thoughts on, oh, we only have like five minutes left. But well, um, I, I also want to say, you know, if you were to ask us, you know, who are um, uh, Ashkenazi male, you know, current, um, you know, personal comics kind, of, it, it would also be difficult just because again, the whole, the premise behind all this question is that there is a, a canon and also a, you know, um, flourishing, um, uniquely Jewish sensibility um, narrative, you know, graphic narrative, so-called industry, which there isn't, um, unfortunately, you know. Well, I uh, there isn't, like, compared, for instance, with Jewish literature in prose, um, you know, which, which saw, you know, such a flourishing, you know, in the 60s, it was, like, white males, uh, and then slowly opening up to, um, you know, much more representative uh, cross-section of the Jewish world. I, I don't I don't really see the comics, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but, you um, comics, uh, I don't want to say industry, you know, medium has, um, you know, uh, that many um, explicitly Jewish uh, voices. Is, is that, does that sound right? I mean, regardless of Ashkenazi, Mizrahi, etc. Yeah, it's, 
it is interesting what you get at about, you know, are there, is there even like a Jewish comics scene right now that is sort of thinks of itself as Jewish as opposed to just Jews who happen to be working in comics. And one of the reasons why I was happy that this group was assembled for this is it's not limited to just people in this group, but there are, there is a flourishing, I think, of interesting, challenging Jewish comics work. I also want to highlight, highlight uh, Miriam Lubicki, who is mm. uh, tremendously talented and uh, Towards a Hot Jew is a, is a, a brilliant collection of work. Um, but again, and, and there's all three of you are doing work that is in this realm. And, but, but I've yet to see it sort of coalesce into like a graduate thesis about what's going on or like a society that is, is describing itself this way. Now, maybe that's partially, co- okay. you know, shout out to Vicky, Miriam. Can you see oh, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't this job, see Towards a Hot Jew I have up there too. I'm not yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I would love to see, you know, I don't know if this is going to be like everyone who's watching this panel is like everyone in Manchester going to the Sex Pistols concert in 1977 and deciding to start a post-punk or something. But um, it would be nice if people who are inspired by this conversation start thinking about ways that you can kind of coalesce that. I mean, maybe Jewish currents can be a part of that, but just trying to establish that there really is this this flourishing in, in certain circles. And, I, you know, Ellie yeah. and Julia are great examples of like, it come, and, and Matt as well, um, although Matt doesn't deal with explicitly Jewish stuff as, as, as regularly as uh, Ellie and, and Julia, it's this, it's very much coming from a left perspective or, or at least a challenging the status quo perspective. Uh, and you look at superhero comics right now and there are always these sort of vague attempts to like accentuate Jewish stuff. But it always just adds up to like, let's give Kitty Pride a, a Magen David necklace. And it's like, is that yeah. it? And then, and then when you or do that- give the thing and, a bar mitzvah. Right, <laughs> give the thing, right. Have the thing go to, go, you know, get married in a Talis. And it's like, that's great. I'm not, I'm not saying that's bad. It's just, that's not, that's not actual like digging into the, I mean, my dream, my absolute dream, uh, if Marvel decides to give it all up and just go hardcore into let anything happen, who cares? I want to write the most Jewish, like Zionist interrogating um, Magneto story that you've ever imagined. Magneto is my guy because he is the iconic bad Jew. Like he's just a complete dick, but like incontrovertibly Jewish. And like his Jewish trauma has been manifested not in him becoming like a kindly old person who tells you about peace and acceptance, but into just going like, screw you, I want to commit genocide, which I'm not saying is anything that I want to do, but I would love to tell the story of someone like that. And I just get mad when like, you know, they had Marvel did have a Magneto Jewish story and I believe it was 09. It really wasn't written badly, but it was so nervous about offending anybody. So it just ended up being young Magneto in a concentration camp. And it was done with a lot of attention to detail. And I really respect the fastidiousness, excuse me, they had in, in having it be a, a rich depiction of that. But ultimately it's just young Magneto being sort of a nice kid and, and bad things happen to him as opposed to like, super villain origin story and really leaning into the fact that like there was something inherent this guy that was already kind of a bad seed and let's just let him be a messy guy with a lot of contours and i would i wish superhero comics and superhero movies and superhero everything would actually get back to the sort of reclaim the Jewishness that maybe wasn't ever even there all that explicitly in Jewish storytelling and just say, this stuff was latent, let's make it explicit. Now I have no idea if that would go over well, I'm sure there would be plenty of backlash. So maybe this will have to end up being, you know, fan fiction with the serial numbers filed off. But I encourage other people to start thinking about how can we take these characters that are ostensibly Jewish or came from a Jewish background and actually ask Jewish questions about them and, and talk about Jewish issues rather than just letting it be this subtext where you go like, hey, that person is ostensibly Jewish and therefore that's my representation check off. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. And asking thorny questions, not just, you know. Yeah, asking uh, the thorny questions, right. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, I could go on and on about my idea, but like Charles Xavier and Magneto meet in Israel. That is canon in the comics. Like they meet in Israel because 
Magneto has made Aliyah to escape the Holo after the Holocaust, and Charles is going to visit a patient there, and they end up having this like journey through Israel in the fifties. And it's like, I want to write that story, man. What were they talking about? But so anyway. like, I'm sorry, <laughs> another. I have all these cheesy comics. I no, I love that you brought them. There's They're great. Great man time. goes to Israel. Uh, and this issue of Bunny, which is this Archie knockoff from... I Wait, think, sorry, uh, what was the title of the one? Uh, this is Bunny, and the guy is a uh, fruit man, goes to Israel. There actually is Hebrew here. Um, they were saying not very nice things about him. And, oh, and it's got really, um, really foul depictions of um, of Arabs. Sorry. Um, Ooh, so yikes. Br break the news that this Ooh, happens. Brother. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, so not like this, I said. But yeah, but actually, I mean, but to that's credit, you know, not to, you don't have to hand it to them, but you know, they were actually engaging with like Israel, which is something that every comic, every superhero comic that talks about Jews just like really doesn't want to get into, even though it's kind of right. the center of gravity for Jewish life, uh, for better or worse. Yeah, so anyway. I would say that's, that's part of like a larger problem with a lot of, um, I mean, I'm not going to call Jews an underrepresented group in the media, but like that sort of politics of representation that's very empty refuses to ask any questions and is just there to check the boxes like this is not just a problem with jews this is a problem with name and identity right like it's just sort of like they see the the end of the path getting the person in the story and just calling it a day and it could be anybody but they look a certain way or they have a certain identity or whatever it is they're from a country and then but there's no because a lot of the time they're not letting the the people who do have the questions to ask do the writing or the drawing or whatever. No. Those questions no. don't get asked. And people also don't, less and less in commercial art, allow for stickier, thornier, messier stories to be told generally. Totally. I mean, the, the one area in which I start to sound like a right wing comic going like whatever happened to comedy that offends, you know, we got, we got to get back to that. The one way I will do that is within the Jewish community of arts and especially comedy um, and comic strips and comics that I think about, we really do need to get to a place where we can offend because right now everyone walks on eggshells because you don't want to say the wrong thing for fear of coming across as being anti-Semitic or anti-Israel or whatever is going to get you blacklisted. And I think that that is just a recipe for bad art. You, you mm -hmm. really you need, it's not punching down. You don't want to punch down. You're, you're, it's, it should be people within the community doing these things um, and being judicious about it. But I just hate this, this idea that like there are certain topics that are just off limit to Jewish art because you're going to, you know, not get invited to, to the next Shabbat dinner. And I, I just, I think it impoverishes everything, but that, that gets at my larger question about how we need to, you know, and a lot of the verboten aspects if we're going to actually keep some semblance of Kalal Yisrael intact. In, in but anybody have any uh, final thoughts uh, on any of this? If not... More, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, I, are you ending the whole thing or are you going to ask uh, get more questions from the... Uh, oh, yeah. Well, we, just, we, ran, okay. we ran over a little bit, so oh. I, I didn't want to keep people too long. But let me see if there's... Uh, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Um, people are enjoying what we're saying, so that's good. Uh, can you there get to more? Up. Um, oh, la last thing. Uh, this is this is part of, you know, I don't know what's part of, but it's interesting. Um, what are people's thoughts on the intersection between queerness and Jewishness in like depictions of Jewish art comics? If the answer is that's too big a question to delve into in a few minutes. <laughs> fine but it, it, it is something that i think about given that it's you know jews and uh, jewishness and queerness, queerness being similarly like flies in the ointment or you know the pea and the princess and the pea that just makes people uncomfortable in a good productive way um you know it's it's the stuff that is not necessarily easy to fit into a box does anybody have any sort of brilliant thoughts about the way jewish art can kind of link up with queer art in a in an interesting way i think I think there's a cool intersection when you think about it in terms of if you think about Judaism as a religion about asking questions, uh, mm -hmm. that's certainly sort of like a main tenet of queerness is like questioning mm. yourself, your sexual identity, your gender, whatever, like that's so much a part of queerness. So I would like to say that queerness is the Judaism of sexual identities. Yes. 
Yeah. And also the idea of, I think someone in the chat also asked about cosmopolitanism, like the talk about oh, yeah. queerness as being fundamentally cosmopolitan or people are like thought to be cosmopolitan. And I mean, in the Soviet Union, as everyone probably knows, um, to call someone a rootless cosmopolitan means to call them a Jew. Right. Right. So like fundamentally also queer, <laughs> I would, I would argue, uh, you know, you're, you're like feet away from a city and suddenly you become queer. Right. It's like magic. Totally. And, and of course, I should add in, in my personal headcanon, uh, Charles Xavier and uh, Magneto were definitely boyfriends. So uh, when you do read that story, if I write it someday, trust me, it'll get real hot and heavy between those two. Um, sure Bride has her curly hair, please. That's yes, of course. And doesn't get a tattoo or whatever we're complaining about today. But um, well, OK, I think we're going to leave it there. But let's give everybody an opportunity to plug something they're working on. There should also, I believe, be links in the chat. Uh, yeah, panel centennials, you got those. But um, in case people are not just looking at the chat, uh, who wants to say where people can find you and what, you know, maybe something you have coming up? Um, Julia, you want to go first? Uh, sure. Yeah, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at, at the Soviet with a T E at the end, in reference to the punk band, but also just like I thought it was cute. Um, I you could order my book Soviet Daughter from my publisher's website. Please don't use Amazon. That's bad. Um, don't use Amazon. Um, uh, right now I'm just trying to stay alive during the pandemic, so I'm not doing a lot of comics work at this particular moment. But I did have a comic on on and upon Jewish currents from this past summer that I was really excited about and I was proud of which is I can't say for a lot of my own work to be honest so it was like a reflection on the George Floyd protests and connecting um uh the idea of transforming a landscape um uh, in a variety of different global contexts to like revolution and what that might entail as a revolutionary act um so yeah great and uh, Matt how about you uh, you can find my work if you just look for love chansky it's l-e-b-c-h-a-n-s-k-y I'm everywhere um, on social media, etc. I have a book coming out, coming out next month with a silver sprocket. If you just go to their store, heck yes, there it's short, but it's good. Ellie, um, my name, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon. Um, also, before we go, can I say uh, this whole? I didn't get a chance to do all my show and tell here. When you're talking about uh, queer stuff. Here's um, very heteronormative uh, when Jewish David met Irish Eileen about uh, intermarriage. Oh, uh, I, yes, this is a classic. Yeah, yeah, I, I did a parody of this, or not a parody, like a, so whatever. I was making fun of it uh, like 10 years ago. And it's really, it's really, uh, it, it's so absurd uh, on its face. Um, uh, and I would have liked to talk more about this, but it just, it, it, it's, it's crazy shit. And it's, it's from, um, I gotta remember like when exactly, I think, um, yeah, uh, yeah, mid seventies. Um, you know, it, it was, it was tackling the, the kind of, you know, um, uh, what do you call it? The, the, the supposedly Jewish issues that were within the larger culture, which is all, was also um, approached by, you know, Hollywood films and obviously, you know, novels um, ad nauseum at the time. Um, and um, it's, it's really a mark of its period. Um, uh, and Charlton comics, actually, we were talking about that earlier. Um, and it, it would be nice to see um, new, um, you know, permutations of um, Jewish, uh, Jewish American or Jewish wherever experience um, uh, today that um, reflect the way we live now. And I'm not saying this reflected anything then. It was, it's actually very comedic, unintentionally. Great. Uh, well, there are links to where you can find more of this work in there. Um, I just tossed in a direct link to the publisher if you want to go buy the book that way, as opposed to having to go through my website, which is the URL that's right now. Um, but if you do go to the one at the website, you can learn more about the book. Um, uh, everybody, this was terrific. Thank you so much to all three of you for having such a great conversation and for doing all the great work that you do. Um, it's, it's really been a privilege. Um, and uh, I guess... All of a sudden, I'm forgetting what I'm supposed to do at the end of the webinar. Do thank I... you, and congrats on your book. I mean, that's yeah, cool. oh, thank you. I guess that was the occasion yeah. for why we're doing this. But yeah, yeah show, show it. Do you have it with you? Yeah, you sure. So, oh, thanks. Let's not let it fall out. Uh, so, this is my book, uh, True Believer, The Rise and Fall of Stan Lee. Nice. Uh, it's a nice, yeah. very pretty object. I really lucked out. I had nothing to do with that aspect of it. But um, as it turns out, by sheer coincidence, gray and yellow 
were deemed the Pantone color combination of the year. I did uh, see that. This was designed, yeah. this was designed like a year ago before that happened. And then that got announced and I was like, you know, the zeitgeist is just hitting that vein and giving me that sweet rush. So um, <laughs> anyway, yes, the book comes out tomorrow, Tuesday. Uh, you can find it wherever books are sold. Please get from your local bookstores if you can. Uh, IndieBound.com will take you there. If you go to the Penguin Random House link, it'll have links to all the retailers and you can just find it directly that way. Um, Okie doke. Uh, I guess that's it. And I'm being told we just wrap up and then the person who is behind the scenes will end the meeting. So Farewell and adieu, um, Zygazunt, uh, and adieu, Zygazunt, uh, and.